Tony Broom Ministries welcomes you today with a question. How many races are there in the human family? When considering the people from all over the world, how many human races would comprise the total of all humanity? Well, how about it? Do you want to take a guess? Ah, uh, okay. I won't leave you in suspense any longer. The answer is, one. Actually, there is no red race, yellow race, black or white. We all came from Adam and make up the human race. And after the flood, all of us descended from Noah and his three sons. Pastor Broom talks about this in our teaching session this time, from the book of Genesis, chapters 10 and 11. Here, is Pastor Tony. So many of you have told me how much you enjoy these podcast teaching and preaching sessions. Thank you so much for your prayers, and thank you for listening. This time we're in Genesis chapters 10 and 11. One race, many nations. All humans are descendants of Adam and Eve. That's where it all started. And then God had to hit the reset button and start us over again with Noah and his family. From Acts chapter 17, verses 24 through 26, these words comprise our golden text, God that made the world and all things therein, giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth. Let's talk about that for a few moments. Sometimes we just read our golden text and let the session kind of hang on that. Don't say too much about it. But this time, let's talk about it. God made the world and all things therein. If God made everything, and the Old Testament tells us that He did, in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and He rested the seventh day. If God made the earth, the sky, the sea, the wind, the waters, the birds, the fishes, the camels and the cattle and the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees. He made all men and angels and everything. In fact, the scripture says that God made the heaven, the earth, and all that in them is, including the sea and the oceans, of course. And it made sure that we would know that all things were created by Him. And it says it here in the book of Acts. And before I forget it, when the Apostle Paul preached to heathen nations, he didn't talk to them about the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob because they would not know that. That would not mean too much to them. When he talked to the Gentile nations, he preached and he talked to them and he presented God as not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, but the God of creation. And that's how he relates God to these people here in the city of Athens. God that made the world and all things therein. So if God makes everything, he has a right to rule over us. He has a right to tell us what to do. He has a right to guide our life. In fact, it says he gives to all life and breath and all things. Everything that you have comes from God. I don't even care. Well, I do care, but just a way of expressing, I don't care if you don't even serve God. Everything you have still comes from God. He gives you life. He gives you breath. He gives you all things. He gives you the food that you eat and the drink that you drink. He gives you the clothes that you put on your back. God gives you everything. And he has made of one blood all nations of men, humans, people to dwell on all the face of the earth. One blood. Brothers and sisters, my beloved, there's no black blood or white blood or red blood. Red man's blood. It's all red. You cut that skin and let that blood oxidate and all of it is red. One blood. The scripture plainly and clearly says that God has made of one blood all people for to dwell on all the face of the earth. He didn't mean, as we will see in this session, for everybody to stay together in one location. He scattered them throughout the earth. 
from Adam came all nations. Now we're in Genesis chapter 10, verse 1. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood. So we're not starting, even though the race, of course, starts with Adam and Eve. We're not starting here with Adam and Eve. We're starting after the flood. The sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. There are three sons of Noah, and unto them were children born after the flood. And it gives you the sons of Japheth. Japheth means to enlarge and get bigger, larger, spread out. And it gives you some of the sons that were born to him. These were the Gentile nations, Gomer and Magog and Medi, Jabin and Tubal and Meshech, Tyrus. These are the sons of Japheth. Verse 6, the sons of Ham, Cush and Mizraim and Foot and Canaan. And of course, Canaan is the one that Noah cursed after the flood that was because of the mishap in which, or maybe it was on purpose by Ham, that he saw the nakedness of his father. But anyway, Canaan, the Canaanites came from Canaan and they were a cursed generation because of that. And they caused a lot of trouble. Israel had trouble with them and they still do. Verse 21 unto Shem also the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth, the elder. So that tells us that Japheth is the elder, and his brother Shem, even to him were children born, the children of Shem. And Shem, by the way, is Shem. In Hebrew is Shem, and it means name. If we hear the expression Hashem, the name name Shem it was like Shem name him old lady and the wife says no you name him Shem we'll just call him Shem give him a name do you know that from this name though came a name glory to God hallelujah from Shem came Hashem from Shem name came Hashem the name of Jesus Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus, from Shem name came that great name. And it gives some more of his sons here, Elam and Ashur and Arphaxad. Now, Arphaxad was the one that we would know more about because from him, through the line, it went down to Abraham and to David. Arphaxad, and Arphaxad means healer, or deliverer so from Shem from that name came a healer or deliverer glory to God just think about it, it makes me want to smile all over myself when I think about from Shem from that name came that one with the name that's above every other name and he of course like Arphic said and even more so is the healer deliverer and it gives some more Lud and Haram but Arphic said is the main connection there from the line of Shem. Verse 32, these are the families of the sons of Noah after their generations and their nations. And by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. And so God tells them to go out and to multiply and to refill the earth. One nation united, then it was scattered. This is the story of the Tower of Babel. 11, that is chapter 11, verse 1. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to. That's the expression you'll find a lot in the Bible. Come on now. Come on, let's get help. Come on now. Let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, come on now. Let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach into heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. This is 
Human ingenuity, but also human pride is kicking in. They said, let us make us a city and a name, lest we be scattered, that we be not scattered from the face of the whole earth. And this is what God wanted to happen. It's amazing how we as human beings want one thing, but God wants another thing. In this case, they did not want to be scattered, and God did not want them to be lumped up together in one place. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. There's that imagination here kicking in. The imagination of the heart of the people was only evil continually before the flood. And even after the flood, you still have that old Adamic nature that's kicking in. And their imagination of the human heart is still wicked. They want to get together and do their own thing. Notice what God says. Go to. He says, come on now too. Does he not, my beloved, the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost? They say a little bit of go to and to. Go to. Come on now. Go to. Let us go down and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound their language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Here, beloved, is tongues, not on the day of Pentecost, but tongues in the Old Testament. On the day of Pentecost, even though some people didn't understand tongues, what does this mean? These people are drunk. These people are crazy. But there are many others who said, what is this? This is good news. We're hearing the good news of the gospel. And so tongues on the day of Pentecost brought people together. Tongues at the Tower of Babel, or Babel, as some people would say, scattered people instead of bringing them together it caused confusion and scattered them abroad upon the face of all the earth the lord confounded their language and george asked bill for a hammer and bill thought he said a screwdriver and he brought the wrong thing and they just could not understand each other and so they scattered abroad and they went to their own families and their own groups and their own languages there are times brothers and sisters and i know everybody now is putting the green potatoes and the rice and the green peas and they're just mixing everything all up together and putting in a big bowl and try to add a little salt and pepper hope you just gob down in there and get you a spoonful of all of it see if you can't taste everything and make some sense out of some of it but it's still nice to have a little rice on the side and the little potatoes and get you a little peas you can take a bite of one and a bite of the other but that's still better than just gobbling it all up together and mixing it all up together and that's the way that the world is trying to just make everybody be into one bundle into one mold and you can't do that people are different and it's okay to be different it's okay to be of different colors god didn't want people to be the same color he didn't make one color. There is no bigger differentiation than white and black. White and black are meant to be opposites. You have black night, you've got white snow. And they're meant to be opposites. They're not meant to be the same color. A camouflage thing that doesn't make any sense is like the sexes. They're not meant to be the same. There's no unisex. There's a male, there's a female. There's the attire for the male. There's the attire for the female. There are different trinkets and different things that the female has that they identify with that the male does not identify with. And the same perspective and same token, there are things that the male does that the female just does not care that much about. Football is an example. Now, I know you've got these girls now. They try to act like they like football. Hobby, dobby, lobby, hobby. There ain't no sense in it in the world. They're on there trying to make a few dollars on the sports channel. It's ridiculous. It's about as bad as a woman weatherman. 
They talked for 10 minutes, and I said to my wife, what in the world did she say? She has to tell me what to make some sense out of the forecast. And my goodness, the forecast is like playing in a sandbox. You just don't have any sense about it. So here, the languages are coming into being, and the people that are scattered about on all the face of the earth. From Shem came Abraham. Now we're branching out, and we're getting closer to God being the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God has this longing, and we've seen it already, the covenant that he made with Noah. God is a God of covenant. And we're getting ahead of ourselves somewhat, but God will be a God of covenant to Abraham. He will make, we even know it as the Abrahamic covenant. Now we're in verse 10. These are the generations of Shem, Shem was a hundred years old and begat Arphaxad. Now, there are other children, but we jump through to Arphaxad because he's the connection of the Abrahamic and Davidic and Messianic line. Arphaxad. He begat Arphaxad two years after the flood. So after the flood, they did what God told them to do, that is to have offspring and multiply and to refill the earth. Shem lived after he begat Arphaxad 500 years and begat sons and daughters. Now, you will see that the generation, the age is still long, but it's not as long as it was before the flood. Verse 26, And Terah lived 70 years and begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Verse 31, And Terah took Abram his son and Lot the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife. And they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were two hundred and five years, and Terah died in Haran. This is where our scripture stops for this session. And so we're getting ready now to open the door and to see how God dealt with and how he had this wonderful relationship with Abraham. We are children of Abraham by faith in Jesus Christ. If you have not made Christ your Savior and Lord, you're a Gentile, you're lost. I don't care if you're an Israelite, you're still lost. You need to make Christ your Savior and receive him as your Lord. It's very important that you do not put it off. And if you receive Christ as Savior and make Him your Lord, you are a son or daughter of Abraham by faith. Not only are you part of the race of Adam and Eve, not only are you part of the race of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, but you're part of the spiritual kindred of Abraham. You're a child of Abraham by faith. And more importantly, you're a son or a daughter of the Most High God by having a relationship with Jesus Christ, the wonderful King of kings and Lord of lords. Father, take this word from Genesis chapters 10 and 11. Use it for the glory of your own self. For the name of Jesus Christ and the blessed presence of the Holy Spirit. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, just because we are all one race, God still had to show us that we couldn't stay together in the same location. In the beginning, God made everything after its own kind. Therefore, the proverb is still true, birds of a feather flock together. The black bird or the blue bird has enough instinct to mate and stay with those of their own kind. What's great about God's kingdom, is that it is made up of all kindreds, people, nations, and tongues, as the book of the Revelation says. Are you part of this kingdom? Have you made Jesus your Lord and Savior? No time, is better than right now. One race, many nations, has been a production, of Tony Broom Ministries.